Welcome to Reminisce with Terry. I'm Terry and I hope that you had an opportunity to look at the tram quiz. If not, please try the link below and see what you know about trams. My tram videos will be split into two uh, to keep them more manageable. This will be a general history of trams and then in the second part, I will look at the history of trams in Sydney, my hometown. If you enjoy these videos, please select the like, subscribe and bell icons, as this really helps me to grow the channel. Trams, trolley cars, street cars, or cable cars. Around most of the world, these vehicles are called trams. However, in North America, they are known as trolley or street cars. The first of these were horse drawn cars. The history of the trams begins in the first years of the 19th century in South Wales, United Kingdom, where a small part of Swansea and Mumbles Railway, located in urban areas, was reconfigured to be used for trams. An Act of Parliament in 1804 led to that first tram in 1807. That very first model of the tram does not have many similarities with modern trams. It consisted of a railway car that was made from wheels and a single platform that featured no walls or seating positions. Basically, it was a horse-drawn cart. This simple platform was pulled by a team of two horses on a regular route where anyone could use them without the need to pre-hire the transport. This design from the UK quickly spread across the world and urban areas where old railroads and networks could be repurposed for passenger use. Some of the first tram networks appeared in the United States in New York in 1832 and New Orleans in 1835. France in 1839, Chile in Santiago 1858, Egypt, Alexandria 1850, Australia, Sydney 1860 and even Indonesia in Jakarta 1869. Steam trams. In the late 1800s, trams became powered by small steam locomotives. Although in Paris, trams used 
large esteem that were located below the passenger carriages. They were very popular not only in Europe, but North America and in Asia. Though there were complaints about the smoke, noise and relatively low power that prevented them from pulling large sets of carriages. Cable cars. While the majority of early train networks were built in cities that were placed in level areas, some cities faced issues of extreme elevation, which caused them to adapt cable operated tramlines. The first and most famous example of this drive system comes from San Francisco, which introduced its cable operated uh, lines in 1836. Other cities that face similar elevation problems quickly adopted this system. Dunedin in New Zealand in 1881, Melbourne in 1885, New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dresden, London and others. Even though cable operated trams are effective, their integration, upkeep and accident prevention mechanisms, the cost of these were considerable. Electricity. Belgian engineer Charles Van de Peul, born in Lichtenveld, on 27th of April 1846 is the holder of around 249 related electricity uh, patents. It was thanks to him and his invention that the trolley tram was used across the Atlantic. 1880 saw the appearance of the first fully electric tram. This marvel was created in St. Petersburg, Russia by inventor Fyodor Pirotsky. The basic operation principle of that first electric tram remains in use today. The gathering of electricity from overhead cable network via pantograph or trolley pole. The attempts of building trams with built-in batteries failed although there were several attempts. Just a year later, in 1881, the first regular electric tram line was opened in Lichterfeld, then a suburb of Berlin. After that successful uh, experiment and integration of electric trams in several other European cities, electric trams became a commonplace phenomenon all around the world. However, even though electric trams won the popularity, other power sources were also examined and used. This included gas-powered trams that started being implemented in several cities between 1886 and 1908. Other power sources for trams can be petrol, compressed air, diesel motors and hydrogen cells. Success. Early on, trams and trolley cars became very popular and extensive networks were developed throughout Europe, North America and Asia. In fact, Sydney had the largest network in the Commonwealth outside of London and Moscow developed the largest network of trams in the world and continues to, to this day. The demise of the great tram systems. The demise of the great tram systems. During World War II, resources were diverted to the war effort and infrastructure suffered a serious decline in maintenance. European networks were destroyed through the destruction of the war. 
and in other allied countries, networks were allowed to suffer from a lack of maintenance and renewal. Rolling stock was old and decades old tracks were in need of repair. This meant that travellers suffered as rides became rougher and less comfortable. Alternatives, the rise of the car and the bus. At the end of the war, governments were looking for cheaper alternatives and the bus and automobile became a solution. Instead of replacing tracks and building expensive new rolling stock and through the sometimes underhanded encouragement of major car manufacturers and oil companies, governments were encouraged to phase out trams and replace them with community buses. The 1950s was also a period of great growth in personal ownership of the car. And again, there was much lobbying for large motorways to cater for the increase in automobiles. This particularly was the case in the US, where a great national program of motorway building was undertaken to cater for the growing use of private vehicles. Trucks for transporting goods, and the need to move military equipment across the nation quickly and efficiently due to the Cold War. Modernism. After the war, there was a movement to leave the old world behind and create a more modern world with modern ideals and visions. The 50s and 60s, whilst under the cloud of the Cold War, were also a great time for optimism and a new future. The old was out and the new was in. Education was changing, buildings were being torn down and replaced by modern minimalist structures and trams were seen as relics of the past, particularly in the Western world. Lines started disappearing. Tracks torn up and bitumen poured over the decaying remnants. New York, London, Sydney, Los Angeles and Toronto all fell to this lack of sentiment. The Soviet enclave, on the most part, maintained their systems and a few western cities were slow to destroy. Melbourne, Australia being one, and enjoys the benefits of a robust, modern system today. The return. Buses and cars were very convenient and enjoyed a great rise in dominating community transport. However, traffic congestion and pollution quickly became an issue in the early 70s. Referred to as light rail, the descendants of trams and trolley cars first emerged in the late 70s in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, a little over a decade after the decline of trams. Today, many cities are reintroducing light rail to combat congestion and pollution, particularly as concern over global warming has emerged. Unlike Melbourne, who kept its extensive tram system, its sister city Sydney is spending billions trying to reintroduce trams as light rail. The Sydney Tram Network. Part two of Reminisce with Terry Trams. We'll look at how Sydney developed one of the most extensive systems in the world and arguably overnight, tore the system down and replaced it with buses. The heady days of the destructive 60s quickly turned to regret and remorse for a once formidable tram network. 
If you haven't enjoyed this episode of Reminisce with Terry, please click the like button and subscribe. If you want to see the next episode as we explore the sad tale of Sydney and its trams. Also, please, I really would encourage you uh, to add your comments below. I would love to hear about your experiences with trams, streetcars and cable cars. Thank you for watching. And I look forward to sharing my next episode with you shortly. I am Terry, and this is Reminisce with Terry.